Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here, Peterson Electric. It is September 27, almost October 1st in 2021. You believe that we're going into a brand new year. Um, I didn't do a lot of videos this year. I do apologize, but we are dealing with COVID and here in Colorado, it's been a bit, um, a lot of stuff going on. I should just say it that way. But on top of that, we had to move our shop um, and I had no idea that would take us almost six weeks and uh, it's been really, <laughs> what a year for us. So anyways, guys, I want to talk to you today about Quiet Cool. Thanks for joining us. Please hit that subscribe button or just tell your friends about us because, of course, you're watching us. Um, this one is going to be, I do these videos every once in a while when I know that I am just frustrated as well as the customer who's trying to DIY. I don't mind if customers try to do it yourself, but keep in mind I am busy, typically three weeks out. I've been in the trade 24 years on my own for 18. I cannot pick up for every phone call when you are in Tennessee or Australia and you have nothing better to do. So keep in mind just to follow the instructions and call their hotline because they're the ones that actually sold you the product. Now you're gonna need a wiggy for this. I would say use this. And typically when you deal with this RF module, this is what it's gonna look like and it's battery operated. I like to date my stuff and put circuit number 26 so I know where the 110 goes to. This is gonna include your RF hub and your RF switch. Your hub is the module listening and the switch is gonna be indicating what to do and it's an IT33002, which it states right here in your manufacturer's instructions that he bought the smaller quiet cool if you don't know what a quiet cool is, there it is, all cut in. Okay, I had to go down this hallway. These are not my favorite jobs trying to get up in these attic holes in all the closet stuff. It'd be nice if you guys would cut in an attic space. Anyways, you can see here that this is a two speed because the yellow wire is not being used. And up above, it is a two speed. If you say, what is a quiet cool? You can Google it, but it should show you a picture of the bag system, I would hope, on this. Hold on a second. They did not. Basically, it's a big, huge green fan with a silver bag that goes right to this attic. And the motor is direct driven like a little helicopter blade. Okay? What you're going to keep in mind is when you're trying to figure out what to do with this module here... There's a few key factors that are frustrating, and it was for me. Number one, they don't show you that the dip switch has to be in the up position of two. You have to follow that. If you don't, you have to disconnect the power. This is why you should have a wall switch up above. Once you disconnect the power and put it back in, of course, during the power off, you'll have to hit two up. This is not like Minka Air where you can pick whatever switch part you want. You have to follow two is up, one and three is on or is down, excuse me, down off. So when you wire this up above, you're taking 110 to a box, and from there, that box, you're gonna go out with a four wire. You can do two, two wire, you can do two, two Romexes out with the black, white, black, white, but there's just not a lot of space in that little handy box. I like doing my black, white, red, red, white. Does it matter on the other side? It does. You wanna make sure black and white, you're always your hot and neutral, ground is grounded, and then I use red to red and red, white to blue. Now, if you don't have that, you can use, reposition your white wire with red tape and use the black to blue and put blue tape if you would like. Either way around it, do not mix up your wires or you will blow it up. This is all done in the attic, okay? If and when in doubt you mess up, all four indicator lights will stay on, okay? That means that you need to redo that again. Disconnect your power. For me, it was pulling out a wire from the pigtail, putting it back in, making sure number two switch was, dip switch was up, put it back together perfectly on. Then it had only the power button. Then you're gonna hit your test button, this button, because all of them are off except for power, and you'll hit it once fast. It goes to high, second time, low, third time, off. Then you're gonna go to your pair button. And the pair button, if you've already been trying to pair it, you do have to hold it for three seconds. It'll indicate for a long time and then turn off, maybe like three seconds. But normally when you're trying to pair, you're just gonna hit it twice, one, two. You're not gonna hold it. Once you hit it twice, it will try to pair. And then you just hit your top button here 
It says you can hit either one, but you just hit it and it'll pair. If it doesn't pair, there's an issue going on with the battery. This plastic mold in the back, they do not show you positive and negative for your battery. Common sense though, that spring in the back is going to be that negative. That little hub nipple is going to be your hot. They are opposite reversed for the batteries. Make sure you follow that with the spring indicating front to back. If when in doubt, go to Google. But the bottom line is also make sure this plastic mold sitting right in here does not go on the, uh, there, there's a battery terminal, does not go on the outside of the plastic mold for this uh, solenoid. It's like an LCD board. You wanna make sure that the batteries have perfect contact is the common sense. If the batteries are not working, it probably is this issue. You might have to get back in the attic and you do have to be close to it in the attic. I like to pair up in the attic rather than below because of the drywall, but it's up to you. Anyways, once that's all set, you should be able to go and hit high and low. And then your indicator. Again, if you're having an issue, make sure your switch is on down here. If you have one going up to that box, from that box to the module. That's why you can hit that test button on the hub up above and make sure the motors are working. Then this basically inside the hub is talking to this RF radio frequency to indicate. Now this is high for one hour, you can go to low for the next. But see how it indicates one hour? You cannot manually turn this off unless you let it burn out for an hour. Or you have to go all the way up to 12 and then you hit it again, it blinks. And then you wanna hit it to go off. That's the only complaint about it, is you have to cycle that button and wear it out to keep going through. Again, there's two, uh, basically a little male-female connection on here that you put this on and slide it down. Once you screw it to the wall, that simple. Um, it is easier once you figure out how to do it than doing labor down the wall, but on top of it, just keep in mind, guys, that this can be a frustrating device. Follow the instructions. They jump all over the place. They tell you go back to step nine. There is no step nine. Basically, you just have to go back to pairing. But what you want to keep in mind is definitely going to be page, whatever page yours is on. This is eight because of this module capping the yellow. This is page 10, and this then goes to 11, but then 11 tells you also to go to 12. Follow your operation, okay? Um, anyways, I hope that helps you out, guys. I gotta cut off this video because I can't be above eight minutes, bye.